Good morning. Uh, my name is Jim Novak of Talent Swarm, and my, our collaboration company, uh, LTX, Leo Golf. We're going to present in 20 minutes the future. And, uh, <laughs> but it's not only the future, it's what we're actually doing today. And all of the previous conversations and presentations are actually a great introduction to what we're going to show here. Everybody remembers this movie, Avatar. Actually, Hollywood precedes many of the things that we later in industry work hard to achieve what the Hollywood people imagined. But digital twins are a reality today. And in the, in the very near future, all industrial assets will have their digital twin. Talent Swarm is using video game technology and industrial standards and telecommunications to create video game-like environments that are a perfect representation of the industrial asset. All of the items are kept in a database so that during the entire life cycle of the project, all of the historical maintenance can be maintained. But, and telepresence windows allow you to connect in real time to the operators in the field. Model-based design is great, but actually where the money is, is in the maintenance and operation. 80% of the total cost of ownership is in, the, is in the maintenance and operation phase of the plant. And we believe that with the use of digital twins and project lifecycle management, that a 30% reduction in the total cost of operation can be achieved. This means more than the initial cost of the design and construction of the plant. And where does this come from? It comes from more efficient operation because you're monitoring the plant very, very closely. From predictive maintenance because you know when something is going to break before it breaks and creates an unscheduled expensive shutdown. And actually, this is kind of how we got started. We have a company called Dynatech, which provides highly qualified engineers to other engineering companies. And we said, how do we provide help to all our customers worldwide in a more effective way, instead of sending them to foreign countries? Create a virtual representation of the plant where people from all over the world can collaborate in real time. And we, it's not just because we've said it here and we're so smart. Gartner, which is the research entity, has identified the top tech trends for 2019. And Digital Twin is one of them. But also immersive experiences so that we can actually collaborate in these environments in real time globally. The analytics that comes from having all that data in international standards. Thank you, Charlotte. And, of course, nothing's going to happen unless it's secured. Because no industry worth its salt is going to put stuff up on the cloud without it being completely secure. And this market, which has been called project lifecycle management, is expected to be Seven, almost $76 billion by 2022. So we're in the right place at the right time. And now with Modelica 2.0, we're even better. The new, the new front end. And we are living, I show this Renaissance robot because we're few here, but we are the pioneers. We're living a Renaissance an industrial renaissance that very few people realize its significance. And the confluence 
of telecommunications, video game rendering, and telecommunications is going to allow us to keep smart objects during many, many years using international standards so that in the future software that doesn't yet exist will be able to read it and these smart objects will be <coughs> documented by the suppliers and the owner operators of the plant will put them together just like pieces of Lego and the, and the word Lego has been used several times in the conference. And this is how it works. We start with a 3D model, CAD model. We add the element of time. 5D would be adding, connecting to SAP and the suppliers and the costs. 6D is where you have the serial number information of the part. And 7D is where we add the simulation so that we can create what we call sentient machines. But this is also something that's already happening. General Electric's with Predix has 250 sensors on their jet engines and mechanics on the ground know before the pilots when a, when a jet engine is, is failing because they have sensors for temperature, pressure, vibration, and all of this goes into a big data database so that it can be analyzed. Just want to make sure I give Leo his time. But, of course, the, the extraterrestrials already knew that standards were important because when they sent us the plans to build the teleporter, um, Jodie Foster figured out how to read them and make the device. Remember the movie? Again, Hollywood is anticipating our industrial needs. And, again, Remember, I prepared this before I came here. So, open source, <laughs> Modelica, standards. In fact, uh, to, uh, the day after tomorrow, I have a meeting with Paul Vanecke of uh, CFOS, which is an outgrowth, outgrowth of ISO 15906 for industrial documentation. IFC 4.0 is also used by architects. We're connecting with that. And, of course, secured with blockchain. And, for example, the CFI HOS participants, this is the outgrowth of the ISO 15926, all of these companies are already adopting these standards, so you're in good company. So, all right, this is great theory. We're already starting to scan in 3D brownfield plants. This is a, a desalination plant in Almeria, and I think the best thing that I'll do now is pass the baton to Leo because that machine that you see in the back be behind us is actually a gravity fed, gravity fed desalination plant. So it's fed by gravity from the mount from water from the mountains and it passes through those reverse osmosis filters. And what Leo has done is taken the PNID diagrams of this plant to create a simulation of that machine. Okay, so when, when uh, Jim called me, it sounded a bit like science fiction to me, but then I thought, okay, uh, at Modelica conferences, we already had presentations with Siemens to have like control test, online control test in power plants, and we, we did all this, so let's try to, to be a part of this uh, science fiction and be one part of this uh, digital twin. So I started to build a Modelica model and talking about digital twins as a guy from dynamic system simulation, especially in fluid systems, I'm always a little bit hesitant because in CAD you can have all the single elements and then you need to build a, a model which runs fast and is stable <coughs> and that's, that's a, big, uh, a big hassle. So, but we try to, do, to use some of the technology we, we developed in the last years or were part of. So, um, I built a model in Daimola where we worked a lot the last years to get it faster and more stable. And we are using the, the TIL library from TLK Thermo, for, which is a special fluid library which has very fast media uh, data and very stable simulation. And we worked hard for, for getting the, the liquid uh, simulation faster in the last years. 
So that's what I built here, and more or less I decomposed this desalination plant into single, single subsystems, and it's re really an early prototype, quite, quite uh, small models in there, but if you, if you look under the hood, then I more or less, I used the PNIDs as I got them from the plant and just started to model the most, the most important uh, aspects of this desalination plant. So, for example, um, we have very high pressure pumps for reverse osmosis and then we have filters where it's, go where it's going through and more or less we need to have the, the pressure levels right and the dynamics right and once we have this, then we can uh, start to use this model um, for uh, for different tasks. I'm going to have a slide on, on which tasks could be used as model. And of course you can't operate the plant without the control system. So currently I only have a, a small mock of a control system, more or less a state machine switching the plant on or off. But now I can have an interactive simulation and start the simulation and stop it again. So when thinking about the model then we have different challenges. First, we need to identify the components which need to be modeled. This sounds trivial, but when we get the 3D data, then we have hundreds of pipes and elbows and valves and stuff, and we have to find out where are the relevant pressure losses, which components do we need, and which can we all leave out for the first part. So there we are working on our Modelica models to get them the important parts first for a first prototype, and then start to add more detail, more detail, but uh, most of you know when you work in modeling, at some point breaks, so you always have to have the way back to make it easier again and to make it real time. And so, for each of the components, we then need to define the required modeling level of detail. So that's also not trivial. trivial. We have to talk to the people using the simulation. What are your scenarios? What physically or chemical effects do you have? Which dynamics do you have to look at? And that's a bit unusual for us because usually I'm working in developing power plants or buildings or cars. There is a development cycle. But this one is a plant that's operating for 10 or 15 years. It's working all day. It has modi been modified several times. So you really, really have to ask people what are your problems, but it's also a big chance because you can ask people what's your problems in operation, what do you want to look at. Okay, and then, of course, the challenge if you have such a new application as reverse osmosis. I searched around for Modelica models for reverse osmosis. There is not much information there, so you really have to build new model components in some of the parts, but that's our, our daily lives at, at Modelica users. And in the end, the challenge is we want to have a fast model, because if we want to use it as a training simulator, it should run in, in, in real time, or these plants are rather slow in dynamics, so maybe we want to have faster than real time to really play around. So to not only have it in theory, I'd like to show a, a quick demo in Daimola. So that's my Daimola model with just a fixed operation cycle. I'm going to simulate it. and uh, show you some plots. So now I simulated one hour of operation. And as I said, it's an only early prototype. I only have a few states in there, maybe 10 or 20 states, but um, I have all the fluids. I have a control bus with all the control signals here of mass flows or pressures, which are interesting to the plant operators. So I can run this in like one and a half seconds of CPU time to have one hour of shutting up and down, driving up and down the plant. So that's more or less the idea. Once we have this, um, we could go to an interactive model. So now I switched on top here the operation, not only switching on and off, but I could go in here and switch on uh, specific uh, pumps or control valves or something and play around. So that's what I'm going to do now. Um, I have to switch to real-time, 10 times real-time. I try to go faster than real-time. And in the plot, I only want to see the last four minutes, maybe. Okay, simulate again. So now I'm really building the new model, compiling it, running it, and now I can shut. The, the, the plant was going on, now I shut it down. Now I switch it back on. So that's more or less the idea. When, uh, once we have the technology, and you see these pressure gradi gradients, they are steep, and uh, we have to have it in. But once we have this liquid model, then we can go to a 
to a um, digital twin and have it for users there. <coughs> So that's my, my last slide, I think, now giving you the idea how do we do the step from our standard simulation into a talent swarm environment and a platform, as talent swarm is building this platform, combining all the standards and combining all the cat data and stuff. We are going to inject our Modelica models there, and we are searching for the right technology currently. That's, that's not fixed. So I wrote here, okay, we want to have Modelica and FMU and Open Modelica probably here because we want to supply to the plant um, but we, uh, currently we are not sure what combination of open source technology and commercial technology we are going to use because we have to find out what the users really need so one important aspect is interactive training sessions we want to have to, the, the operation people to use it we want to do virtual control tests quite early and especially we want to investigate early error scenarios strange operation of the plant. There we need reversing flow, all the stuff we have been working in Modelica for a long time to, to supply this. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, thank you Leo. This Brownfield project was actually, is actually a pilot project for a much larger project that they're building similar to this one in Oman. It produces 240,000 cubic meters of water per day. That's the equivalent of 100 Olympic-sized swimming pools. This is a plant that they have in the south of Spain that is 200,000 uh, cubic meters of water. But the problem is they are worried that the, the Oban government that requires <coughs> local operators to operate the plant are not familiar with the operation of these delicate machines. Reverse osmosis is kind of like a human kidney. You're actually purifying water, but if you don't use the right pressure or you don't have the right water or the water is not correctly processed before it goes into the filters, you completely damage the filters. The filters have to be thrown away and they're the most expensive part of the plant. So here's a real life example of how model-based simulations can save millions of, of dollars because of avoiding or pre with preventive maintenance. And in the case of the Oman plant, we actually have the 3D model of the plant. So in this case, we're not going to have to scan the laser. We can actually import the objects directly into our Talon Swarm database to create this uh, virtual environment to work with. And as an American always says, you know, you have to have an ask at the end. My ask is that any company, any <coughs> supplier, any person, standards organization that is interested in this kind of vision, please ask Leo and I for our cards. We'll be happy to collaborate because collaboration takes more courage than competition. And I believe that that's the future of our industry. Thank you very much to all. Thank you. We open up for some questions. I'll ask a question. Oh, thank you. <coughs> yes. I, I think this uh, digital security concept is uh, very interesting, but uh, it's also a little bit. Uh, uh, Ambitious. I mean, it, it, it means. What do you mean with a, an, a, a with a digital twin? It's usually something that you something that should cover all the aspects of your product. But there might always be new aspects that you haven't included in the digital twin, and there can be some some so I mean some confusion about what is the digital twin. Really. Can you come to that? I'm glad you asked that question, and I probably went through it too fast, but that 3D to 7D scale shows a little bit of the, of the spectrum of what a digital twin can be. To some people, a digital twin is just a laser scan of a facility. That would be, as far as I'm concerned, a snapshot 3D. If you start to add a time element or supplier information, which is the 5D, or you serialize the information and you keep track of the history, that's 6D, 
If you start to do simulation, it's 70. This is just a nomenclature that I've kind of adopted to try to create a nomenclature that we all can kind of agree on. But again, uh, digital twin, model-based engineering, uh, model in real time. Uh, model at run. Model at rat run time. There's different nomenclature. The point is that just like you would not get into a plane where a, a pilot had never piloted it simulated before, this is a simulation of an industrial process, just like we simulate the trucks. By simulating the object, the plant, the asset before you build it or before you operate it, you can learn a lot about avoiding mistakes. But your question is true. The standards are trying to wrestle with what we call a digital twin. But you can see that Gartner already has adopted that and is pushing that out into the press. I mean, there's just a risk that it's abused. <coughs> it's abused. You're right. It's yeah. abused. It, it's true. That's why we've tried to segment it. And one thing that I've learned, I've been traversing the desert for six years, talking about digital twins. You have to talk to the direct to the executives of the companies and sell what they need today. Talking to them about sentient machines and simulations to some is science fiction. But for others, like these clients, uh, not these, but other clients, they just want 2D plans of the plant because they don't have as-built plans since 1990. This is a, a client in Germany. So we're giving them a digital twin 3D. A final question, Eric. <coughs> so now you would have a, a virtual and you have the real plant. Have you given any thoughts on how to uh, make sure that you can, can configure, configure, manage the real plant and the virtual plant in an efficient way? Absolutely. What we're doing with this simulation, this is just an early prototype, but we've already had permission from this client to connect to their SCADA information. So the plant, the digital twin, will be live. It will be a 4D digital twin because it will show in real time what's happening. We're not controlling the plant because that is a bit another leap of faith to another step. But we are definitely, as part of the, the plan of this project, we will connect with SCADA. And even more so, we will connect to IoT sensors where there's no sensor information today. That means providing Wi-Fi coverage in the plant and finding ways to deliver uh, power to those hard to reach areas where you might need to put an IoT sensor. Okay. But I'm, I'm here, so any questions? I can show you some of the digital scans that we've done at, at the breaks. Thank you. Thank you, Eugene and Leo for this presentation. Thank you.